apparently her problem is worse than mine. So why even bother with me? I'm done anyway. No! This was the moment that truly changed for me. I remember it like it was yesterday. I cupped my mouth. I looked down in true and sheer disbelief that this actually happened right in front of my eyes. It truly tells me and everybody that plays this game that life is fragile and life is also extremely strange. What's going on guys? This is your boy Gata Blega and today we're going to be talking about my experience and my playthrough with Life is Strange. To celebrate the new sequel coming out, Square Enix, the producer of Life is Strange, actually is coming out with a sequel to this game with Max Caulfield, the main character that you play as, coming back in this sort of murder mystery type deal. And it truly has me excited because playing Life is Strange is easily one of the top five games I've ever played in my life. The second game to ever make me bawl my eyes out. Now, for those of you who don't know, Life is Strange is a story of a character called Max Caulfield who goes to this preppy rich kid school and obviously without spoiling anything you meet several characters in this game and every decision that you make truly is the difference between what happens in game uh, whether or not you lose friendships whether or not somebody jumps off a building whether or not you have a boyfriend or if you lose your other friends even goes to f as far as possibly destroying the town I know that sounds strange and I know that sound I know that sounds ridiculous and very exaggerative, but it truly is what makes this game stand out amongst the rest. It's a game after all, but the overall lesson that you learn in the end is still the same. It's that life is fragile. You have to be very careful with the decisions that you make. Because you never know if that one thing that you say, if that one thing that you miss could be the difference between you losing a friend or a family member or your life just completely turning 180 degrees for the worse. My personal experience is, of course, I am part of the minority who couldn't save Kate Marsh. In the game, you meet this character called Kate Marsh, and I related to Kate specifically because she was the character that was bullied in this school. She was the character who was the weird one, the Christian, the goody two-shoe, and unfortunately, I was that kid once upon a time. I related to her heavily not only because of the parallels between her life and mine, but also because as a Christian, it truly does make me feel even more compassionate towards somebody of the same faith. Now, of course, of course, the outcome that came for me wasn't necessarily the one that I wanted, but it was a very important lesson to learn. Because when I picked up this game two years ago, it was merely just based off of the fact that somebody invited me to play the game. And as I was playing it, I wasn't taking it seriously. I was joking around, I was saying mean things, I was not really listening to the dialogue, I was just sort of moving along with the game, as I usually do with any game that I play. The minute things started to take a bit of a more serious turn, that's when I started to get a little bit more invested in Max, a little bit more invested in Chloe, and some of the other characters in the game, specifically Kate Marsh. The game teaches you that Max has a special power that allows her to turn back in time to give you the freedom to make changes to the decisions that you have previously made. Now you have to be very careful when you use this power because you have to live with the decisions you make thereafter and some of them have dire consequences. Now because I personally didn't really listen to Kate all that much, I wasn't really paying attention to the game in the beginning. This led to my ultimate downfall on the rooftop. When you get to the rooftop, when Kate is standing up there, you lose all ability to reverse time. And it is truly up to just you and solely you alone to save her from that ledge. I was unsuccessful. And when she jumped, I completely lost it. Apparently her problem is worse than mine. So why even bother with me? I'm done anyway. No!
truly was the most difficult thing I've ever had to endure in sort of a gaming sense because it truly did hurt me more than I had expected. And it taught me a very important lesson that life is not something that you should play with. The decisions that you make can be the difference maker, big or small. Now, of course, this made me realize in the past three and a half years that it is truly important to take the decisions you make in life extremely seriously. And I am grateful that I had the experience that I did with this game because it really shaped my life for the foreseeable future. Because I think that the true message hidden behind this game, it's that it doesn't matter if we can sit here and say, I wish I could turn back time to change a few things. Because if you could go back in time and change things, it really doesn't necessarily mean that it will be the best outcome. So you do have to live with the decisions that you make. Which comes down to the conclusion of this video, which is, hey, why don't you just go back and replay the game if you care about this character Kate so much? That's not the point of the game. The lesson that the game was trying to teach me at the time was that it doesn't matter if you turn your Xbox off or dashboard and go back and try again. Moments such as those when it truly is solely dependent on your skills, your listening skills, your communication skills alone because it could truly mean the difference between somebody jumping off a ledge or not. So for me, being in that same position once upon a time exactly where Kate was, I gotta tell you, I'm glad I played this game because it truly taught me that sometimes there is no going back. You have to absolutely accept the consequences of your decisions, no matter how much it hurts you. So with that said, choose carefully, my friends. Have a good one.